have a report to share with you all, which I find very interesting, okay? And I'll back it up with scripture so that you'll understand why it is interesting. Check this out. Biblical treasures stolen from Jerusalem's temple could be hidden under the Vatican. Boy, oh boy, all sorts of areas of scripture really popped in my mind when I read this headline. And so we're going to get right into it. Um, the report... Uh, there we go. The report goes as follows. The, the Vatican is home to a wealth of priceless treasures spanning the antiquity, medieval ages, and renaissance. Although wonders like the Sistine Chapel are open for the public to enjoy, little is known about treasures kept deep under St. Peter's Square. It is well known the Vatican holds onto a great collection of historical texts in its, in its secret archives, more than 35,000 volumes of information spread across 53 miles of shelving. And that is a lot of information. <clears throat> Officially known as the Archivum Secretum Apostolicum Vaticanum, the archives hold documents about the trials of the Knights Templar order or the excommunication of Martin Luther back in the year 1521. The Chinese philosopher Lai Zhu once said, knowledge is treasure. But Tom Meyer, a Bible studies professor at Shasta Bible College and graduate school in California, uh, has told uh, the report that some believe actual treasures of forgotten gold and silver may be stashed away somewhere under the Vatican. He said, and I quote, the wealth of the Vatican is incalculable. They possess priceless works by the world's greatest artists, such as Michelangelo, Raphael, and Caravaggio. He says priceless museum quality objects are on display in over 1,000 rooms. Additionally, their immense underground vault store historical artifacts from the past that are kept from the public view. Among these priceless objects buried deep underground could be the treasures taken from the temple back in Jerusalem in the year 70 AD. Now, in 66 AD, friends, the people of Judea took up arms against the Roman Empire under Emperor Titus in a desperate bid to drive the occupying forces out of the Holy Land. Well, the Great Jewish Revolt, or the First Jewish-Roman War, which was uh, in the year 66 to the year 73 AD, was the first of three major uprisings against Rome. Now, unfortunately, the campaign was not a success, and some historians estimate that as many as one million Jews were killed in the conflict, while many were sold to slavery and taken to Europe. In the summer of 70 AD, the Romans marched into Jerusalem and torched the Second Temple upon the city's Temple Mount, which is the holiest site in the whole of the Hebrew world and has never been rebuilt since. Now, of course, in the times we're living in, Talks of a third temple has definitely been happening. It's been on the horizon and very serious. Now, the act dealt a crushing blow to the rebelling Judeans at the time. And to add insult to injury, the temple was sacked and its treasures were shipped to Rome. Professor Meyer said that Titus quelling the Jewish rebellion epitomized in the looting and destruction of the temple and its treasures were so significant his younger brother, the Roman Emperor Domitian, erected an ark in his honor, depicting in detail Titus carrying the temple treasures to Rome. The Ark of Titus, erected in 81 AD, provides a snapshot image of the different temple treasures, including the famous solid gold seven-branch candlestick or menorah, silver trumpets, and the table of showbread. Folks, this is huge. Titus. Following the modus operandi of the ancient Near East, brought the temple treasures of the conquered Jerusalem over to Rome as trophies of war. And according to Josephus, stored them in the Temple of Peace, alongside other rare treasures from around the world. Now, the Temple of Peace, or what's called the Tempio della Passe, was a grand structure and its ruins can still be seen facing the Valian Hill in Rome. The temple was brought down in the year 191 AD by a fire, but was later restored by Emperor Sub um, excuse me, by Emperor Septimius Severus around the year 203 AD. When the fire uh, tore through the structure, the temple treasures already stood there on display for a hundred years. Some historians believe the treasures were saved from the fire and stored away in a, in a palace on the nearby Palatine Hill. Uh, so what I find interesting about this is a couple of things. Uh, first of all, they say that the treasures could be 
hidden deep inside the Vatican or under the Vatican. That, that's the term, under the Vatican. And I think of a scripture found in the book of Revelation, chapter 6. Now, in this portion of scripture, in the entirety of chapter 6, it records the first six seals of judgment. There are seven seals altogether as the first sets of judgments that are released by God himself from the seven scrolls or from the scroll with seven seals, excuse me. And so I want to show you uh, Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. Now before I go here, I want to, let me read it a bit in context. Let's go to Revelation chapter 5 because um, I think it's, it's important for us to know uh, about the scroll and its importance and how the, the, the fifth seal, I believe, is closely tied in relation to the biblical treasures that were stolen from Jerusalem's temple that could be hidden under the Vatican. Revelation chapter 5, starting in verse 1, And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside, and on the back sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who was worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals. And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked, and behold, the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints, and they sang a new song. Verse 11, Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard them saying blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. Now let's go here to chapter 6, verse 9. It says the following, pardon me. When he, talking about Jesus... These seals are so important, folks. No one was able to open them. No one in heaven, nor on the earth, nor under the earth was able to open them. And it grieved the Apostle John much. So much so that an elder had to stand up and comfort this Apostle and say, listen, there is one who is able to open it. That was the importance of the scroll with seven seals. And so again, when we go to Revelation chapter 6, verse 9, where we are now here at the fifth seal, and it says the following, When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God. And for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer, until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren, who would be killed as they were, was completed. All right. 
So here we are. Biblical treasures stolen from Jerusalem's temple could be hidden under the Vatican. And again, the claim is, is that th these treasures were looted from Jerusalem's second temple in 70 AD that may still be kept under lock and key in the Vatican's dungeons, that it was loot. Now there are reports, some teachers of theology of the Bible, who state that the portion of scripture found in the Gospel of Luke chapter 21 refers to the war that took place in the year 70 AD. I want to go there. Let's go there very quickly. The Gospel of Luke chapter 21, verse 20, and it talks about the destruction of Jerusalem. Now, please, in context, this portion of scripture, this chapter talks about the signs of the times and the end of the age starting in verse 7. It says here, so they asked him, saying, Teacher, but when will these things be? And what sign will there be when these things are about to take place? What things were they talking about? Well, is what Jesus said just prior to that verse. He said here, it says here, Then as some spoke of the temple, the Gospel of Luke chapter 21, verse 5, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and donations. He said, These things which you see, the days will come, in which not one stone shall be left down upon another, that not that shall not be thrown down. And then that's when the disciples asked him, <coughs> excuse me, what will be the sign what you know that all the you know that you know the things that you say is going to happen. And that's where Jesus in detail in context outlines that there will be nation rising up against nation, kingdom against kingdom, that you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. You must not be terrified for all these things must take place. And, 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 and there's more that he talks about, earthquakes in various places. But then you go down in verse 20. And Jesus says the following, which I find very interesting in, in light of this report. He says, but when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of her depart, and let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days, for there will be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Do you know that we're living in these times? I don't think it's by any coincidence or any accident that this report was put out within the past 24 hours. A biblical treasure stolen from Jerusalem's temple could be hidden under the Vatican. So we're looking at a couple things here. First and foremost, we're looking at what I just shared with you about the fifth seal of the book of Revelation. Not only were biblical, you know, not only were biblical treasures stolen from Jerusalem's temple, from the second temple that are in the Vatican, but were, but so were the souls of martyrs. And I believe the time has come. Not only were biblical treasures stolen from Jerusalem's temple, from the second temple, and from that war, but I believe that we're also being forewarned that there is going to be another war very, very soon when it comes to the nation of Israel that will involve the Roman Catholic Church or the Church of Rome, if you will, the Vatican. And it's going to be a type of repeat. And this is where the third temple is going to be uh, now, uh, uh, you know, a mainstay. It's going to be something that is it's going to be of great importance in order to prevent war. In order for, for, for another Holocaust to be prevented, in order for you know, Rome not to do another damage to the people of Jerusalem, to God's holy people, we must now build a third temple. 
And they're going to decree and declare that Peter is going to come and he's going to sit on that temple. It is going to be known as the rock. He's going to be the Messiah. It was going to be a false Messiah. It's going to be the Antichrist. And this is all leading up to that abomination of desolation that is spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Let him who reads understand, just like it says in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24. The abomination of desolation, Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. All right, so here we are. I believe that war is imminent against the nation of Israel. And yes, you may say, well, yes, you know, Iran. Iran is a constant threat now that we have a new administration in the, you know, in, in the White House. Uh, you, know, we're, you know, they're talking about, you know, reviving the nuclear accord with Iran, having that alliance, that covenant, if you will, that agreement that the U.S. was part of with the P5 plus one nuclear accord with, with the nation of Iran. It was, it was you know, discontinued, uh, you know, with the prior administration under Trump. And now it may, uh, you know, see new life under the Biden administration. And so that is going to be the cause of war when it comes to the nation of Israel. Not so fast. I hear you. But Rome, the Vatican that always tries to pose itself as innocent, as a mother church. It's a, it's, 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 it's a harlot. It's what the Bible calls the mystery of Babylon. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. And it says here in Revelation chapter 17, and see, this is no, this is very strange to me because, you know, we just had a swearing in with the Biden administration and there was a lot of symbolism. Make no mistake about it. All this mask wearing, this vaccination, the great reset coming out from the World Economic Forum, all the rituals that took place at the Super Bowl halftime and wearing masks, which represents slavery. How are you going to have a lot of professional black dancers Doing something like that's like a once in a lifetime thing, which is to perform during a, a major sporting event, in this case, the Super Bowl. Excited, man, they're pumped up, they've been training for this, and you're gonna tell them, listen, wear a mask on your face. Not realizing a lot of these 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 young professional black men that and I, I, you know I'm assuming I, you know there were no women I don't know if there was any women that were you know you know part of the dancing with the white bandages over their face if there was please forgive me you know not, you know because I you know all I saw was young men um, but how, how are you gonna tell them to wear something that symbolizes slavery in Black History Month? That to me was mockery. I'm looking at this. Now I didn't see the the you know I didn't see the game uh, or you know I didn't see the Super Bowl uh, halftime. I saw maybe ten minutes of the game yesterday and I shut it off because I was already at the end and I, I just wanted to see who was going to win. So I didn't see any of the halftime show. But again, the Super Bowl halftime show celebrating Black History Month for the year 2021, and they had a, a lot of young black professional dancers cloaked in slavery scolds bridal face mask, which is an instrument of punishment, torture, and public humiliation. Now, with that, if that wasn't mockery enough, if that wasn't telling history, we're going to try to repeat it with the Holocaust, whether it be with the Jewish people or the black people, you pick. But we're going to be symbolic here. Uh, you know, biblical treasure stolen, right? From Jerusalem's temple could be hidden under the Vatican. We're living in the last days. War is imminent with the nation of Israel. You can kind of have your, you know, your choosing. Again, a lot of people are saying, well, it's going to be Iran. Don't be surprised if Rome is involved in this. 
They have a lot of money stored. They have a lot of a lot of game they could play, if you will. And the, nobody wants to believe that the Vatican's willing to do that, but they they are because they're Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. And then you have the symbolism of 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 you know the new you know of the new president being sworn in, regardless of your political affiliation and what you know what you you know you know you, you know regardless of what you're siding on. That's fine if you if you don't like them, do like them, whatever. I'm talking about the symbolism of it all. This is a big, it's a big occult ritual. I don't even know if I could call it satanic anymore. It's Luciferianist. It's to usher in the Antichrist. And so you have a lot of these, you know, during the Biden swearing in with Harris and Biden, the new president, the new, you know, the new vice president, the new administration, and, you know, they have all purple and pearls. And gold and and, and 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 scarlet. So the colors were were specifically chosen. Did they know what they were doing? Well, I'm sure they did. So they had, you know, who was it? The Lady Gaga saying, I don't know, she sang a song or something during that. And and you know, she, you know, I, I she, she's not a believer. And not that you need to, be, you know, be a believer in Christ to sing before the White House. I'm just making a point. These people are, you know, these people are Satanists. And, and it's, it's all symbolic, and she wasn't the only singer. Again, I'm just making a point. This is all symbolic of Revelation chapter 17. I want to read this portion of scripture to you. The one of the seven angels uh, who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, and I will show you the judgments of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth commit fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which has full excuse me, which has full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman, check this out. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. So this swearing in of the Biden administration told us that Rome was involved, that Rome now owns the presidency of the United States of America. Last presidency, it was the Middle East. It was Saudi Arabia. It was Israel. And Israel's not as innocent as that nation seems. And I hate to say it because I'm talking about God's nation. This is the holy nation, but the people in it are, are far from it. They all need to be saved. And so now we see the Vatican in charge of the presidency of the United States of America, of America and they put their, 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 you know, their signature on it. Where's the purple? Where's the gold? Where, where are the pearls? And everybody's like, oh, no, we're just wearing purple and pearls just to celebrate Harris. You know, we have a new female black, you know, vice president. Okay, are, is she black? Because, you know, the birth certificate, apparently she has a birth certificate stating that her, her nationality or her race is white. So what game are they playing? What's really going on? Can we call, can we say, we, can we celebrate having a, you know, a first female vice president? Because they're not even acknowledging genders. You don't say man. Don't say woman. If, it, if, you know, if a woman's, you know, if a woman is pregnant, you can't celebrate the woman being pregnant. You have to celebrate a person being pregnant because there's a lot of men becoming women or trying to be a woman or trying to identify as a woman or claiming to identify as a woman. And you don't want to offend them because you never know. They could get pregnant as a man claiming to be a woman. And so you could call them a person pregnant, a people pregnant, a purple penguin. And then you get this Dr. Fawcett. Is he a doctor? Dr. Fawcett, a lot of junk that's coming out of his mouth. Nothing that you could drink. Just false, fake, false, falsy. Falsies. False, like false eyelashes. False prophets is what I'm looking at with all this nonsense. Where one mask, where two masks, where three masks go. I mean, Simon says, what now, next, who, what? And now he's wearing masks with purple penguin on it. And I remember a few years back doing a broadcast that they were trying to put out this purple penguin nonsense that, you know, it, it, it literally says that you're not, you know, you, you're not a gender. You're genderless. So they're, they're seeking to take away the identity and the Vatican's involved in it. So yes, biblical treasure. Who's made in the image of God? You and me. And they're seeking to steal the identity of every man, woman, and child on this planet with this great reset. With this world economic forum and all the powers that be, their power is powerless. Their so-called ground that they've taken is groundless. It means nothing. I enjoy more of a stronger cup of coffee than what they believe they have in their so-called hand. They hold, they hold nothing, yet they think they're playing a game. 
They think that they're winning. And they're not. They're done. Now, I come to you this broadcast, in this broadcast, to forewarn you. The name of my ministry is Open Your Eyes People for a reason. And Jesus said in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, he says, To open the eyes of the blind so that they may see. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim deliverance of the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are oppressed, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And in the book of Isaiah chapter 61, where that same scripture comes from, where it originated from, the, the mouth of the prophet Isaiah as being led by the spirit of God himself, and the day of vengeance of our God. To proclaim the day of vengeance of our God. So as they're promoting their symbolism over in the White House. Oh, Rome, Vatican now is in charge of the White House. Vatican is now in charge of the highest seat of the presidency because, you know, you have the United States. You have the, you know, the government of the United States has become a whore. Opened, opened her legs to any high bidder. And so who's going to come in? In this case, Mystery Babylon the Great. It was, it, was, it was mother's turn now. The mother of all harlots and of the abominations of the earth. And it says here, I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. So let's not be surprised if there is war that takes place with the nation of Israel soon against the nation of Israel. And Rome's hand will be all over it. Because they like stuff like that. It tickles their fancy. They, they, they like to go against the saints of God. They did it before during the destruction of the second temple. And they're going to seek to do it again. Unless you give them what they want. That third temple. So that they can worship the false prophet as God. So that they can usher in. Their beast, their, their antichrist, whoever the heck that is. They have it all laid out. They think they're all smart and cute with their stuff. Oh, let's just wear purple and red and, and, and we'll put on masks. Black, you know, Black History Month. We'll make, we'll make all these, uh, you know, black professional dancers believe that they're doing something great. Not knowing that we are publicly humiliating them. By telling them to wear a slavery sold bridal face mask, which is an instrument of punishment, torture, and humiliation. And not only that. They're seeking to put every man, woman, and child under that same bondage by telling you, you got to wear a mask. And not just one, but two. Not just two, but five. As a, and, and, you know, it, 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 folks, we, we got to wake up. We got to wake up. All right, so I want to take you to another portion of scripture here. So we're talking about, you know, biblical treasures stolen from Jerusalem's temple could be hidden under the Vatican. I want to take you to the book of Daniel. Check this out. Because this is what's next. Daniel chapter 5 talks about a feast that took place. It was called Belshazzar's feast and it's located in chapter 5 of this book. This is this is what I'm looking at with all this symbolism with all this occult rituals that's taking place on a worldwide scale. Is that again, wars are going to be coming up against the nation of Israel very very soon. Rome's hands will be all over it. They're going to claim innocence, of course. They're going to claim, listen, in order for, they're going to claim to be a peacemaker when they're the ones who really started the war because they hate the Jews. They hate anything outside of them. That's why they become their own cult. The Vatican, the, Rome, the Roman church, the Roman Catholic church right there in Rome, the seven hills where, where the beat, you know, where, where the woman sits on seven hills, that's where it says. That's where Rome, you know, that's where the Vatican is located. They hate anything and anyone that is outside of their cult. And so, so now we have a portion of scripture that is a word to the mother harlot, to the church, uh, the Vatican, and all those that have slept with her. Listen, the Christian church has slept with the Vatican. Kings and priests have slept with that harlot, the Vatican. And it says here, now before I read Daniel, please, you got to read this with me, okay? But first let me, you know, before I get into Daniel, let me uh, just um, read this portion of scripture very quickly. Revelation chapter 17, uh, verse 5. And on her forehead 
a name was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. But the angel said to me, why did you marvel? Why did that, why did that impress you? You know, to marvel at something, you ever look at something so beautiful, so grand, artwork, a scenery out there in the mountains where you're driving, something that just like takes your breath away. You're like in awe. That's what it means to marvel. You're like, you, you become, it's like, you, you're like, whoa. it stopped you in your tracks. When you just, this is the thing, it's, it's gorgeous. It's, it got your attention. And the angel said, why did you marvel? You don't marvel at this junk. The apostle says here, the apostle John said, when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. But the angel said to me, why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and ten horns. And so this is where this harlot, which is the Vatican, the mother church, has become one with the kings of the earth committing fornication with her and the inhabitants of the earth that were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. You can read the rest on your own, okay? But I want to go to Daniel ch uh, chapter 5 real quick, okay? Read this with me. Belshazzar the king made a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in the presence of the thousand. This is like the leaders in the Vatican and those who have slept with that mother harlot. Verse 2, while he tasted the wine, Belshazzar gave the command to bring the gold and silver vessels which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken from the temple, which had been in Jerusalem that the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. Again, just reading. Biblical treasure stolen from Jerusalem's temple could be hidden under the Vatican, okay? Last 24 hours. Verse 3, Then they brought the gold vessels that had been taken from the temple of the house of God, which had been in Jerusalem. And the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze and iron, wood and stone. In the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his hips were loosened and his knees knocked against each other. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans and the soothsayers. The king spoke saying to the wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing and tells me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple. And have a chain of gold around his neck. And he shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now all the king's wise men came, but they could not read the writing or make known to the king its interpretation. The king's, then King Belshazzar was greatly troubled. His countenance was changed and his lords were astonished. Now listen, folks. Something is happening in the times we're living in concerning that mother harlot church called the Vatican in Rome. In Vatican City, because it's got to be proper. You can't just say it's in Rome. It's in Vatican City. It's got its own little cult, its own little cult address, its own little cult, knick-knack, atmosphere, paddywhack, nonsense, demonic, abominable area. And there's a writing on the wall for that Vatican. Can't call it a church. I'm just going to call it what it is, mystery, Babylon the Great. Now, no longer a mystery. The writing on the wall. So I want to take you to this portion, same, same chapter. And it says here, that this king was so troubled, he called Daniel up after he was referred to him. And this king didn't understand why he was having such a good time and all of a sudden, a writing was on his wall that no one can explain. It was written by a man's hand and it freaked him out so much that he, he pottied himself. And it says here, in verse, 
I, I, please read it in context on your own time, but I want to get uh, right to this portion. Verse 22. Ah, let me read in. Yeah, verse 22. Daniel tells King Belshazzar, but you, his son Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart. The son of King Nebuchadnezzar. And you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven, which is what the Vatican has done. They have brought the vessels of his house before you, and you and your lords, your wives and your concubines, have drunk wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which do not see or hear or know, and the God who holds your breath in his hand and owns all your ways. You have not glorified. He said, Belshazzar, you thought you, you were owner of something. You own nothing. You thought you, you, you had your own breath. You don't even have that. And then it says here, verse 24, Then the fingers of the hand were sent from him, the owner of all owners. And this writing was written, and this is the inscription that was written, Many, many tekel a parson. This is the interpretation of each word, many. God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, you have been weighed into balances and found wanting. Paris, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Then Beshazzar gave the command and they clothed Daniel with purple and put a chain of gold around his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. All right, so here, the same word is what is inscripted. To Mystery Babylon the Great. And I prove it by going back very quickly to, to the book of Revelation, chapter 17. And i got to end the broadcast, but just stay with me here. Just a couple more minutes. I prove that the writing is on the wall for that Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth, the Vatican. I prove that it will not last any longer than what it has already lasted. I prove that it's going to be brought to nothing. Watch this. Check this out. Revelation chapter 17. This is confirmed by that portion, that word that was given from the Spirit of God in Daniel chapter 5. It says the following. Verse 14. Uh, verse 15. Then he said to me, The waters which you saw... Where the harlot sits, the peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, and the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind, and to give their kingdom to the beast, until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman whom you saw is a great city which reigns over the kings of the earth, that is the Vatican. So the ten horns that are going to be propagated, they're going to be uplifted and promoted by this harlot is going to be destroyed. These ten horns are going to destroy the harlot. It says it will hate the harlot, make, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Folks, it's, 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 it's right. We're, we're, we're in these times. It's right. It, it's it, we're we're here. Okay, now I, I gotta let me just please be with me just for a couple more minutes. Revelation chapter eighteen. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, "Babylon, the great, is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for 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 every unclean and hated bird." For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her just as she rendered to you and repay her double. According to her works, in the cup which she has mixed, mixed double for her. In the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously in the same measure, give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen and am no widow and will not see sorrow. Therefore, her plagues will come in a day. Death and mourning and famine 
and she will be utterly burned with fire for strong is the Lord God who judges her. And people are going to be crying out, alas, alas, that great, that great city Babylon, that mighty city for one hour, your judgment has come. Woo! That city that had the bodies and souls of men that treated God's treasures just like King Bashal's are treated God's holy treasures. In one hour will fall. The finality of Babylon is right around the corner. Folks, you got to be saved. I'm telling you, the day of the Lord, the, the day of God is at hand. And you must be born again. You must be born again. Your name must be written in the Lamb's book of life. It must be. There is no other way to be saved except through Jesus Christ. Jesus made a way where there seemed to be no way. He who knew no sin became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus our Lord. And Jesus Christ is Lord of heaven, of earth, and under the earth. And he's coming again in great power and glory. And people think he's going to come again to set up you know, his throne here on this earth in, in the same time frame. He, it's just going to be that same you know, dirty, you know, just, you know, you know, I say like the dirty atmosphere, that worldly atmosphere. You're just going to sit up at his throne and just sit and we're just going to all visit him. No, no, that's not what's going to happen. That's not the way it's going to happen because Jesus said here in, in the gospel of Matthew chapter 24, because listen, folks, the Antichrist is going to do that. He's going to look like he's going to, it's going to seem like Jesus and it's not going to be him. Jesus himself said that during the great tribulation in the gospel of Matthew chapter 24 verse 23 he says then if anyone says to you look here is a Christ or there do not believe it for false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive if possible even the elect. See I have told you beforehand. Jesus is going to come, he's going to rip the sky open. The Bible says that every eye shall see him, even them that pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn, even so, amen. All the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. It's not going to be a celebration. Like, oh, the aliens are visiting. Oh, there's Jesus, the alien. You know, was this, oh, we'll have our welcome party. He's going to come in and party with us. Like, oh, yeah, we knew you were going to come set up your throne. Your, you know, your earthly kingdom. That doesn't even make sense, your earthly kingdom. The Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away. But not one jot, not one tittle of God's word will pass away. Second Peter tells us that the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment. You know, you get reservations. You, get, you know, make reservations to go out to dinner. The Bible says that the earth has a reservation. But not to go out to dinner... But for judgment, the earth. Second Peter, read it. Do you read your Bibles, folks? Second Peter chapter 3. I say that respectfully. We got to read our word. We got to read the word of God, folks, the Bible. Revela uh, excuse me, Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9, or chapter 3 verse 7. But the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word, the word of God, are reserved. They have a reservation for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. This isn't some kind of holy fire. It's going to be a, a, you know, it's talking about fire, but it's not actual fire. Like the one you, you know, you get from a stove, the one that you light outside in a bonfire. It's a fire of God's glory. It's a spiritual fire. No, this is fire. This is judgment. People trying to make the judgment of God as some kind of like um like a fairy dust. Like it's a new age. We become new age now. But we don't want to talk about the judgment of God. Don't talk about fire and brimstone. If you say it's fire, just call it, you know, sprinkles. And if you say it's brimstone, call it, you know, fairy dust. We don't want to freak anybody out. No, freak out! If you're going to die, die in the fear of God rather than be deceived and die. You, you, you die deceived, you're going straight to hell. You die in the fear of God, that, that there's hope. You die by faith. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some kind of slackness, but his long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 
Oh, so then that means we have all the time in the world because Jesus don't want nobody to die without him. Jesus is just a sucker like that. You know, he's just one of those mats that you walk on. You know, you get slapped on one cheek, you know, slap the other. Give him another one to slap. So Jesus got all these cheeks. He's one that, you know, be slapped every once in a while. A little light slap here and there. Maybe hard ones. Jesus is like that. You can just walk on him like a doorman. No! Even though he doesn't want anyone to perish, but that, you know, even though he doesn't want anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance, the Bible says, but, very next verse, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. And the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt up. You can't mistake that. You know, I got a fireplace. If I burn the log, it's going to burn up. Unless it's a fake fireplace. I don't like fake fireplaces. You know, the gas ones. I know people like the gas ones. You know, they got a fake firewood and the fake, you know, it's, I guess real fire. But, you know, fake. To me, it's fake if it's gas. People prefer that. Whatever. I'm just making a point. That's ain't a fake fireplace, fake log moment that Jesus, that God the Father is going to be doing. We'll just use the earth as a fake fire log and, you know, protect. No! It's going to be bad. But in a good way. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. And the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt up. But God's going to set up his earthly kingdom. No, you're talking about the Antichrist. You're readying yourself to take the mark of the beast. Because this is why I'm hearing a lot of new age teachings in the times we're living in. Oh, well, he's just going to set up his earthly kingdom. And we're just all going to visit him. We'll just all take turns. We'll, we'll go in time zones. We'll go in groups. And we're just going to go visit him. He's going to, he may go to the, he may, he's going to be in Jerusalem in the third temple. People are so excited in the church. Oh, the third temple is going to be built. I'm like, are you nuts? Are you, are you nuts? You've become a cheerleader for the devil. You've become a cheerleader for the Antichrist. And, and you're celebrating the arrival of the beast. You're not even, you're going to, oh my, these people are going to perish. The church is done. I'm telling you, we're, we're, this is the last generation. We are the boat of all boats. Noah could be like a type of Tony Stark. You ever see the movie Iron Man? You know how Tony Stark in the movie, not to get all into it, but I just want to make a point. Tony Stark in the movie was kidnapped in the beginning of the movie. Well-known, multi-millionaire, billionaire creator of all sorts of you know machinery, man. That, that he was the man who just you would go to if you needed something built. Military, he had contracts with the military and everything. So he 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 was he was a genius. And so terrorists kidnapped that man. And he was able to get himself out of it after, you know, virtually, you know, you know, die, not virtually dying, but almost dying, almost becoming dead on their watch. And with, with the help of one other man, he was able to make himself a suit to get himself out of there. And it was with, with scraps. When his partner found out, because his partner, you know, his partner actually betrayed him, it was like a Judas. When his partner found out, he wanted his own men to do exactly what Tony Stark did. And his own workers were like, we're not Tony Stark. Because the guy was like, well, he was able to make this whole Iron Man suit fly out of his, of his entrapment of terrorists that I set him up in with scraps. And his workers were like, but we're not him. And here we are. We, we're the last generation. We're supposed to be the boat of all boats. We're supposed to have an ark, if you will. We're supposed to be preaching Jesus. Preaching the ark of safety. And, 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 and Noah is looking at us because we have a great cloud of witnesses knowing that we're living in the days of Noah. You know Noah's on top of this looking at everything that's happening as best as he's, you know, as, I say as best as he could or as, as much as he's allowed. Again, with the great cloud of witnesses, Hebrews chapter 12. You want to read your scriptures, read the word. We have a great cloud of witnesses looking on, you know, we look onto Jesus, the altar and the finisher of our faith. And we have a great cloud of witnesses of, of men and women of faith who went before us that's cheering us on, that's looking at us. We're, we're, we're in a race of faith, folks. And, and so Noah is like, I can't imagine. Noah's like a Tony Stark. Like, I built, I built an ark with scraps, guys. You have the boat of all boats. Jesus went. He came already. He did the work. All you have to do is preach. And you can't, oh, he's tripping out. 
He's, I, he's, listen, folks, I, I'm telling you, it, we got to be steadfast in our faith. If you're not born again, you need to get saved. You must, because the Bible says in 2 Peter, very, I got it in the broadcast. I know I do. I'm going to do it right now. It says here, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 11, Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, since the earth is going to be burnt up with, with fervent heat, I know you want to believe, maybe not you, and I hope it's not, but so many people want to believe that the new, this last day's generation has become a new, uh, you know, what's it called? The, you know, a new age occultic church. And, you know, you just got to look the part, act the part, and, you know, Jesus is going to set up his earthly kingdom. Just be ready to take your new mark, I mean, your new number, your new social, your new social score. And they may have to put it on your right hand or put it in your memory so you won't forget. But technology is our friend, not our enemy. Or you're being deceived. For those of us that have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. I'm not talking about this woke nonsense. A lot of the, oh, boy, are you woke? And you know, what the hell are you talking about? Pardon my language. People spewing nonsense. If you have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, you're not supposed to be woke. Yeah, open the eyes. Open your eyes, people. Where is my ministry? The Lord, the Holy Spirit of God is the one who opens up our eyes, our spiritual eyes. But we're to walk by faith, really, and not by sight. So as, you're, if you, as you have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, it says here, right in the broadcast, Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, praise be to God, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. And I'm looking forward to that day. A new heaven and a new earth. And then let it be that the time that you are here on this earth, that God was able to watch you, study you, and approve of you for whatever he has planned for you in the kingdom of heaven. Because the kingdom of heaven is a kingdom. We're not just going to be, you know, once we get to heaven, we're, we're not just going to be uh, just like uh, invisible or doing nothing, and, you know, standing there all day, you know, or not all day. It's not going to be day or night. I'm just, it's, it's eternity. It's eternal life. We're not just going to be there wondering, okay, we're into you now. We're, uh, this is boring. No, no, nothing like that. This whole time, my resume has been, look, I, I'm turning 43 in March. I've been saved for 16 years and for the past 16 years but I'm going to say by faith I'm giving my I'm giving the Lord all 43 years of my life and saying uh, this is my resume <laughs> and I you know I, I'm ready to work I'm ready to work when I get there what you got what do you need I'm here this is just the beginning soon enough as we're living in the end times and I pray that you have that mindset that you're saying okay hold on this isn't the time for me to just you know, this is, this is the, the what, do you, what do you call it? The beginning of the end or something? But not, not, this, is, this, is gonna, this is a big deal, folks. The day of the Lord is at hand. And I pray that you're, he's able to use you come that time. He says, um, Eye has not seen, nor ear has heard, nor has entered into the heart of any the things that God has for those who love him. Visit my website and learn more about my ministry at www.openyoureyespeople.com, www.openyoureyespeople.com. Um, while you're there, I want to invite you to become a monthly partner. Come on, your donations help make the work of this end time ministry possible. Take a moment, donate, and become a monthly partner. Um, I look forward to bringing to you another broadcast. Until then, may you all be blessed. In Jesus' name, bye-bye.